Camtasia 2024 is here, and there are some cool changes, but first, some big news. I've been a fan of Camtasia ever since I started creating videos. One of the things that I liked about it was that you could purchase the software for a one-time fee. Sure, you weren't going to get any upgraded features unless you chose to purchase a maintenance agreement or the yearly upgrade package. But if you were fine sticking with the features that you purchased in your perpetual license, it was a cost-effective way for people to get started creating videos. That changes this year. TechSmith has announced that they are going to move to a subscription model. This means that you will pay a yearly fee, but you will get new features as soon as they're ready, instead of having to wait for an annual feature release. Now, this is why I'm on the fence about recommending this software. TechSmith did create a 2024 Camtasia version for those of us who purchased a perpetual license in 2023 and purchased the maintenance agreement. So let's take a look at some of the cool features that have been released. I'm going to start with a quality of life feature update. In the menu on the left hand side of the screen, we can now drag and drop the different menu items into any order that makes sense for us. So since I use cursor effects and we're going to be talking about captions today, I'm going to move those to the top of the menu. The biggest and probably most exciting change is the ability to create dynamic captions. Go to captions in the menu on the left, then in the selection pane, choose the second tab for dynamic caption style. This is going to give you several choices to generate captions that have moving elements to help viewers follow along with your words. Grab one of the options that you think you'd like to use and drag it over to the timeline just above where you want the captions to go. Now you can do this for your whole timeline, but I'm just going to do a small section right now. And I do suggest that you add your captions after you've done your editing. Notice that I now have some text at the bottom of my video and I can expand the text box as well as move it to different parts on the screen. Now for me, this is really important because in the tutorial videos I do, there's often buttons that I need to push at the bottom of the screen that would be blocked by the captions if I didn't move them. I'm going to drag the playhead across the timeline so that we can see the blue box move over each word as it is said in the video. We can customize our caption some more by going to the properties box on the right hand side of the screen. If you don't like the font for the captions, you can change it by clicking the drop down next to the word font. I think this one is easy to read, so I'm just going to leave the default. Let's scroll down the property pane a little bit more to the dynamic caption section. And one of the first things that you can do is you can change the word color. By default for this one, it was white, but let's say I want it to be yellow. Now I'd like to draw your attention back up to the caption and notice that as I say the word, it changes to yellow and then goes back to white after the word has been passed. Next, I'd like to draw your attention back to the properties pane on the right and let's look at word opacity. You can choose to make the words in the future or the past be a little bit more transparent, giving an extra emphasis to the word that you're saying at the moment on the screen. Let's drag the playhead across the timeline again so that we can preview what this will look like. While I think I was a little extreme with the opacity, I encourage you to play around with it and find an aesthetic that works for you. Moving on to the next customization, the caption that I chose has a blue box behind the words. I can change that by clicking the drop down next to the color and choosing from my colors, or you can use the color picker. Now, one of the tricks that I use is I change the color of the box to something that exists in the video just to have a little bit of consistency. Now, another really cool feature that is the second step of this is you can select the audio on the timeline to view and edit the captions. This is really good for people who have industry specific language, acronyms, or just jargon in your videos. You can just select the word and then update it. So for this example, I'm gonna change gonna to going, and then I'm gonna draw your attention over to the captions on the screen so that you can see that the update has been made in the dynamic captions. 
Another way that you can bring visual interest to words on your screen that are not related to the captions for the audio is to use the new annotations. You can see from this screenshot, I was trying to direct you to the description to look for a link. Now, the way that I did that is I went to annotations and I chose one of these new styles that has the letters with the stroke around it and then just dragged and dropped it onto the canvas. I suggest that you play with these until you find one that suits your design aesthetic. And even if it's not exactly right, like maybe you like the shape of these letters, but you don't necessarily like the dark red, you can always go in and change it to another color. With the exception of dynamic captions, I find the 2024 Camtasia release to be a bit underwhelming, but I get why the company did this because they say there's going to be additional features with the 2025 release that's scheduled for the fall and is tied to the annual subscription. I provided a link to the software below and I leave it up to you to decide if it's for you or not.